happy to have Steve Krashen here. Uh, I mentioned on my YouTube channel that uh, you were going to be here, and a number of my viewers said, oh, please let us know what you find out and what you learn and so forth. So better than that, we're going to do a discussion, and you were going to explain something exciting that's happening or ideas a that you have. A number of things are on my mind. Right. Still, still finding things out, still learning stuff. Right. It's amazing, and it's accelerating, not decelerating. Good. The turning point was retiring. Okay. 15 yeah. years ago. Right. Great. Yes, no yes. more faculty. So you, you got busier. You got yeah, busier got once you retired. Oh, my goodness, yes. Uh, in the area, what I did here at the conference, a little bit new, this is my first encounter with all these wonderful hyper-polyglots, people who know all the languages. In my talk, I talked about whether my work is consistent with their experiences. And the major part was to say, we're going to look at case histories, and if I find one case history of any of the polyglots that is not consistent with the comprehension hypothesis, my work, I'm in big trouble. So this is a stringent test. Right. The trick with case histories is to look at a lot of them. So I went through the ones I knew. I spent a lot of time on Lomkato, mm -hmm. who I knew when I met in Hungary, and Steve Kaufman, whom you may have heard of and went through what they said at each stage from both of their books, their reactions, and they were amazingly parallel. What is clear is that both, neither rejected grammar, neither rejects grammar, I have to use rejects and rejected, because right. Lomkato's passed away. Uh, both have an interest in it. Both Lomkato told me, I just love grammar, it's so interesting, it's nice that you're here and I can talk to you, you can't discuss these things with your neighbors. But she said it's really overdone. She recommends for adult students, just do, it should be optional, and just the regular form of verbs, don't do anything else. And uh, with children, the idea of teaching grammar is absurd, which is You know, and I'll, I'll, I'll just jump in here, and I think this is a very important point, and that is that, that by stressing input as you do, compelling input, uh, even though there are people who are attracted to learning grammar for different reasons and stuff like that, I still think, and I do occasionally look at it and mm -hmm. forget it and stuff, it's so important to, to make the point that the input is where the learning takes place. Yes. That's not to say don't learn grammar. Right. And I want to introduce, throw back to you the idea that two of the polyglots here, very accomplished polyglots, Richard Simcott and Luca Lampoyello, they do other things, like uh, Richard Simcott, likes attending uh, language class and I interviewed Richard and Luca has a technique where he translates from the language he's learning into his own language and then back into the language however if you really analyze where they spend most of their time what do you think it is comprehensible input everybody exactly. does it some people do this some people do that they do a wide variety they all do comprehensible input right. it's the only universal feature I have found in successful language right. learners. Yeah. Now, to bridge to my other new thinking, what people do is they have strategies for making input comprehensible. Good teachers do this, and the polyglots do this. Uh, teachers, they might be telling a story. They'll come to a word that they're pretty sure the class doesn't know. They'll explain it. They might translate it. They might give a synonym. They might draw a picture. It's not designed for you to learn the word and remember it. Right. It's designed to make the text more comprehensible. Absolutely. The irony is, if you do that enough, it'll help you acquire the word. I, I, you know, I can't resist jumping in. We call the meaning of the word at link, when you look it up, we call it a hint. Exactly. Very we do good. not call it the meaning. Really, It yes. is a hint. And we know from experience that if you, and of course the word changes from blue to yellow, and if you see that yellow reminder that you've actually seen the word before, and if you see it often enough, eventually the picture, that total Gradually, scope of the word. Gradually, a little at a time, it comes. Exactly. So before we went on the air, uh, I told Steve that I figured out a way where I can use his system to my own advantage. I've been doing Mandarin. Mm -hmm. Great fun. You've got to be like you. I just It's so interesting to be struggling all the time. Mm -hmm. I do it not only for the pleasure, but as part of my research. Yes. It has to fit, so mm -hmm. I'm constantly examining it. And I have decided for a while uh, to not worry about characters. I did characters for a while, and this uh, correlates with Steve Kaufman's experience with the way he did uh, Mandarin, but to do a lot of uh, pinyin mm -hmm. and a lot of listening. Mm -hmm. 
but I've decided when I go to Hansi, when I go to the characters again, it's going to be with your system. Right. It's going to be absolutely perfect. I can get it a little at a time, let it exactly. gradually build up. Well, this, of course, is the point with Link. It's, it's based on reading and listening. Exactly. And you, you, you have to have the characters. However, my experience with learning uh, Mandarin was the first month I had intensive exposure to these dialogues with audio and pinyin so that when I went to learn the characters, I had a, a reference, a word that I knew the sound of, knew the meaning of. And I think whenever we learn something, if we can tie it to something that we already know, we're going to learn it better. This is so interesting because this is exactly what happened to me a month ago. Mm -hmm. I decided to start listening and reading at the same time in pinyin. Right. And it's so much fun. Oh, yeah. The weird thing is happening with one. I did a couple of books with Linda Lee, my first Mandarin teacher. So wonderful. And we have it in pinyin and in characters, and it's recorded. So I've been listening to the stories, which I helped write. Right. You know, and I, I, you gave I, me I think something. they're interesting. Yeah. And I've been listening to her reading them very slowly and carefully. And I've been, yeah, I've gone through it about, you know, each chapter about 10 times now, 15 times. It's interesting. It's nice. She does a nice job. The other day, I picked it up and read it alone. I heard her voice in my head. Yes. Reading the story. Yeah. The correct pronunciation is beginning to be acquired. Right. Absorbed. The tones sounded right. And at some point, and at some point, you will have enough of the language in you that you want to output it. Yeah, it's coming. That's right. But there's no hurry. Oh, my great experience with Mandarin. I've had a few nice conversations. Right. I was in Dusseldorf in the airport, transitioning from one plane to the other, coming home from Czech Republic, another story. And I was, was traveling with Jason Fritz, who's this phenomenal TPRS teacher. And we're all, there's a big jam up in the airport, and there are all these people, and they don't know what to do. The people next to us in line were all from China. They did not speak German. They did not speak English. There I was. I spoke Mandarin to them. They went absolutely crazy. I would say things like, oh, man, man, you know, may went And they said, oh, that's so nice. You can say, oh, that's wonderful. So we had this broken conversation. At the end, I went ahead of them to do the passport check, and they were behind me, and I said, you know, okay, goodbye. Uh, well, I need men, you know, oh, yeah, I love yeah, you, yeah. you know, and all this. And they just applauded. They were very upset in the beginning, and at the end, they felt a lot better. Yeah. Um, Lom Kato has said, language is something where if you only know a little, it's a good thing. Right. If you only know a little of science, it can be dangerous, Maybe. as Donald Trump has yes, illustrated yes. Yeah, to yeah, us. Yeah. If but if you bridge, only yeah, know, yeah. if you only know a little of the language, right. it's a virtue. Right. Enjoy it. Right. And while I'm talking to Steve Kaufman, I might as well tell people uh, this: reading his book and listening to his interview at this conference has been a great therapeutic help. Steve has made a couple of points that really hit home with me and will with others. First of all, he says other people generally don't care if you make mistakes. They are not judging you. Right. And people like us who are so excited about grammar, we think if it's not perfect, uh, we shouldn't say it, etc. So that has taken a lot of pressure off. And also the other day, the Mandarin is coming slowly. But uh, Steve has said, you always think you're gonna be real fast and it's never quite as fast as you think. But once you're sucked in, you can't stop, which is exactly what has happened. And he has said, and I love passing this on, when that happens, just keep reading and listening. Don't worry about it. Just keep reading and listening, and that seems to be the cure. Exactly, and I, and I say often that I think experienced language learners, as I'm struggling in Hebrew right now, yeah. I'm struggling. I mean, every day I go to read it, and again, I can't remember the letters and what they mean and, and stuff. I and, hope and, you're listening to this. You know, this is, and, true. And I, this but is I'm Steve only, Kaufman saying this. this I'm only in it two weeks now. And yeah. I know from experience, I know from my experience with other languages that it will eventually come. And so it doesn't bother me, but I think it discourages a lot of people because they put so much effort in and they constantly forget. Yes, you forget. And, and you, you do. don't rely, I don't re rely on memory. There was a presentation here about different ways of remembering. I don't rely no. on it at all. No. And, and one thing I wanted to mention, which I haven't mentioned to you, but I was doing some reading on the brain and stuff, how it works. And by forcing yourself to learn Chinese, you're forcing the brain to do something that's new 
that you haven't done before. And that is creating new neural connections. It is oh, yeah, expanding, yeah. It's, 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 it's taking advantage of that plasticity, which if at our age, we basically are no longer interested in doing new things, then actually we start losing some of those uh, uh, neural connections. So the process of reading, the process of listening is expanding our brain. We will eventually get to our goal. The process by which we learn, I think, is more tied to the listening and reading than it is to any deliberate instruction, deliberate, uh, you know, uh, study of some aspect of the language. So you're on the right path. You just have to stay the course. And I will on Hebrew and you will on Chinese. And Putin Putin there's, Putin. there's a couple of things going on at the same time with both you and me. We're not only trying to get comprehensible input and acquire the language, but we're examining the process mm -hmm. as we do it, and we're problem solving. We're working at the same time we're doing this, we're both, all of us, all the polyglots, are working on theory. Mm -hmm. We're constructing a theory of language acquisition, right. constantly refining it, changing mm -hmm. it, and learning new things. Right. We're going through cognitive development at the same time. Mm -hmm. The parallel theory to comprehensible input with learning in general is we get smarter, by trying to solve problems. Right. Linus Pauling knew more about chemistry than anyone who ever lived. He spent 60 years trying to solve every problem of significance in the field of chemistry and many in physics. Mm -hmm. Encyclopedic knowledge doesn't come from study. It comes from problem solving. Right. And in terms of problem solving, each of us wants to solve different problems. We all have our own path. Mm -hmm. Picasso says, find your gift, develop it, and give it away. Right. You find your path. Mark mm -hmm. Twain says, the two most important days of your life, the day you're born, the day you discover why, what your path is. When you find your path, mm -hmm. you solve problems in that path, you're happy, you're in love with your work, and you get smarter. Mm -hmm. The only way to get smart, genius means you've discovered your path. Geniuses are people who've discovered their path right. and stick to it. That's why we're so happy. And, absolutely, and if you're doing something that matters to you, it's got to matter. You're sol solving problems that matter to you. You're, you do it, you mentioned flow, flow theory. You're Ch in Chuck flow. Chuck me highly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, brilliant, brilliant book, flow, check it out, it's wonderful. So basically that's what we have in common? Yes, well, uh, and, in his book, Player Piano, no, yeah. not Player Piano, um, Cat's Cradle, Kurt Vonnegut says we are all divided into teams, caress. And members of your team, you, you were, were working on the same task to solve the same mm -hmm. problems. Mm -hmm. And that your teammate could be anyone, could be somebody working at uh, the drugstore somewhere, or someone you met in a bar, or it could be your cousin, maybe somebody you don't know. You go to get these polyglots together, we're members of the same team. Mm -hmm. And our job is to work together to solve these problems. Absolutely. Which makes us happy, non competitive, right. with the same goal. Before we went on the air, we were just uh, talking about the polyglots here. And what a wonderful, interesting, relaxed, uh, happy group. Cooperative, they are. Uh, supportive. Thrilled when there's learning, uh, yeah. whatever. So uh, we should perhaps end on, on the following note, and that is that uh, you don't have to be a renowned language acquisition, acquisition expert like Stephen Krashen or a YouTube uh, <laughs> performer <star>. like me. <laughs> YouTube star. You know, you don't have to know five languages, 10 or 15. If you are at all interested in languages, please make a point of attending the next Polyglot Gathering or Lung Fest or similar function near you. You won't regret yeah, it. This is my first. It's amazing. Having a good time. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay.